to the face. The foreman said, you and you out. I said, what for? He said, you. They thought we were drunk because we were singing. <laughs> hey, we were singing Carol. You remember? Oh, yeah. Oh, Carol. That's the one. I don't bother fool. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, I love you. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the, the song. One. That's the song. <laughs> Don't be treated cruel, you hurt me, and you made me cry. But if you leave me, I will surely die. Darling, there will never be another, because I love you so. Here, detailed observations are made of sunshine, temperatures, rainfalls, snowfalls, and stream flows in the Kosciuszko area. This is our world today. Modern transport, television, and the universal power of electricity generated by coal, uranium, or the rushing water of mighty river. Scientific testing laboratories were being set up as the work progressed on the scheme. In the fluid mechanics laboratory, accurate scale models are made to check the behavior of full-size structures long before they're constructed. An exact replica of the dam was built. Frank Gibbs, formerly of Elstree Studios in England, worked with two Italian technicians on the model which was to be correct in every detail, for water will soon find a fault. The close interaction between designers, scientists and builders was one of the many firsts which the Snowy Scheme brought to the Australian construction industry. High-speed cinematography assists in studies as film photographed at the rate of 3,000 frames a second enables engineers to gain a clearer picture of water behaviour. And though the methods may seem crude 50 years on, the actual project design can hardly be faulted, even today. The positions of the drill holes are then marked on the rock face. The drills come into position. They commence to bore. The first American contractors came to the scheme in 1954. Their arrival marked the end of an era for the easygoing Australian approach. When the American turned up on the scene, he was one of the bosses, uh, but he said, what the goddamn hell are you doing here, sort of thing, and uh, there was a boil in the billy. Not on my job, you know, to tick the boot under the billy, tick it down the hill. So he issued thermoses, and that was the instruction then. You didn't stop and boil the billy, you had your hot cup of tea with you. Suddenly, world tunnelling records were being broken over and over again. This new can-do work ethic was rewarded with generous bonuses. And with the snowy workers being among the highest paid in the country, even the riskiest jobs seemed worth the effort. Large drills bored the 50-foot holes which would be loaded with explosive. As they are completed, the explosive steam place the detonators and link them with fuels. Explosives conveyed to the site in plastic containers are tipped into the holes and covered with earth. When the area has been cleared of all personnel and equipment, the charge is fired. I was the first aid man, right? Might be there at two in the morning. I had a little electric box that said, lightning's in the area. So if they're loading up with gelignite up at the face, and we have rails that come right out of the tunnel, about two feet away from where I'm sitting with my valuable little life, right? And this box is going zing bang, zing bang, zing bang. And then I see the lightning, and I phone up the boss at home, the American. He said, oh, God damn, he said, John, how, how close is that goddamn lightning, you know? I said, well, you know, it's pretty close, just in the valley. Why, it's quite a way away, is it? I said, it was kind of coming closer. He said, well, you phone the guys up, up at the face there and tell them to keep on working, that is, loading the face with gelignite, and you get back to me if it changes, if the situation changes. You got that? 
So in other words, everything is in my lap, and I've got no real, well, I've got every, all the power and no power at the same time, which, you know, I mean, really wakens you up at two in the morning, doesn't it? Soon, Americans' tunnelling records were being broken by one of Australia's own. When Teese Brothers, a small family-run firm, won a major dam contract on the Snowy in 1958. But the euphoria of achievement had a dark side, with the death count of one human body for each mile of tunnel. I tell you, you can shit yourself, yeah. The miners were going up shaft with their lift, and uh, they come nearly up to the top, about more than 1,200 feet high, and suddenly everything went off, and they went back down without brakes and anything. They just fell down completely, and there was that on the spot, all of them, three or four of them, that uh, in one go. They send this concrete down by a pipeline and the boys working underneath. Three or four boys working underneath to uh, fix up the concrete. The pipeline broke and the concrete still uh, come down and pipe as well. And one fella got stuck. Because the concrete had a quick set and they couldn't free him because the concrete was setting really quick and he you know, they had to either cut him off somewhere or, uh, or leave him there and he finished up staying there. Another moment where they were all drilling and they used the old buttholes. That means from the previous drilling there'd be some holes that hadn't quite exploded with, with a little powder or jelly night left. And to gain an advantage, the drillers would put, the, put their drills into these holes and start drilling. And this happened. And at chest height, the whole thing blew out. And so we had, you know, I forget how many guys were hurt, probably the better part of the whole shift, maybe 20 guys or more, with bones sticking out of rubber boots and guys with holes in their stomach and very, very bad. 121 men lost their lives on the scheme, half of the deaths due to tunnelling accidents. I wish to speak as man to man on a matter that causes me a great deal of concern and one which is of the utmost importance to all of us. Accidents and injuries which have resulted in the loss of 15,000 man days last year. Many of these accidents were caused through plain carelessness. Many injuries cause unnecessary pain. They also cause hardship through loss of pay. The money talks message was blunt, but the drive for a safer workplace on the snowy was well ahead of its time. A workman's steel toe cap boot struck by a rock which fell 30 feet saved the man's foot from severe damage. Wearing this helmet avoided head injury. These safety spectacles prevented injuries to the operator's eyes. Such examples demonstrate the value of protective equipment. Frank Sureti. German. Sicherheit. Hungarian. Bistonschag. Spanish, seguridad. Swedish, sicherheit. Italian, sicurezza. Safety in any language is important. A joint safety council, headed by Bill Hudson himself, was set up to monitor all accidents and safety standards. A rehabilitation centre was purpose-built in Cooma to treat the snowy workers injured on the job. And seat belts became another first when Commissioner Hudson made it illegal for workers to drive on the job without a belt. 